Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. And what about this? The last copy of Motorcycle News had an article about the top 21 uh, bucket list destinations for motorcyclists. And guess what was number two? Scotland, the North Coast 500, is in the top 21 of the best riding anywhere in the world. We actually did that trip back in early 2019, a couple of years ago, and we thought it was absolutely amazing. In fact, I posted six videos up on the channel. And given the restrictions we're under at the moment, particularly in the UK where there's no riding to be done anytime soon, I thought it might be a great idea to repackage those six videos in, into a short one showing you the best bits, the highlights for us of the North Coast 500. If you stick around, at the end we're going to put our top tips to think about if you're considering doing the North Coast 500 in the future. So the question I want you to consider, is the North Coast 500 Britain's best motorcycle ride? We'd love to hear what you think and stick it in the comments below. So in the meantime, why don't you settle back and enjoy with us North Coast 500 Rewind. The most fantastic biking weather, the most amazing scenery. It's going to take some beating. The North Coast 500 is a 516 mile scenic route around the north coast of Scotland, starting and ending at Inverness. We actually decided we'd start a bit further south than that, so our route actually starts in Glasgow and finishes in Edinburgh. Good morning folks, welcome to a very sunny Glasgow. This first day is going to be a relatively short hop up to Fort William. The beauty of sitting off from Glasgow is that it gives us an opportunity to ride along the banks of the beautiful Loch Lomond. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights here we are in Tindrum for the very famous biker stop at the Green Welly Cafe. After a quick pit stop for a coffee at the Green Welly, if you continue along the A82, it eventually brings you along to Glencoe, arguably Scotland's most famous, scenic, and historic glen. Keep on searching for my highs. When you get to the village of Glencoe itself, don't be tempted to follow the A82 to Bella Coolish. Instead, take a slight detour and head right for Kinloch Leven and a beautiful ride around the loch. Kinloch Leven, folks, on the way to Fort William. When you leave Fort William, be sure to stop off and visit the Commando Memorial. It's a very moving place and pays tribute to the fallen British commandos of World War II and also recent conflicts right up to the present day. Five miles before you reach Balmacara, you can't miss the Ellen Donan Castle. Ellen Donan is Scotland's most beautiful and famous castle, and it's appeared in many films, including Highlander, Loch Ness, Entrapment, and James Bond's The World Is Not Enough. It's probably the most photographed castle in Scotland. I'm in a pit stop to stretch the legs and have some water. It's about 20 degrees and it's absolutely gorgeous. But it's an amazing ride, but it's just absolutely magnificent. Beautiful Scotland. Wow, we should have been here before. You can say I lost my mind, I will keep on holding my head high. Even if the sky is falling down. Today we've got uh, Balachna Bar and we'll check in when we reach Applecross. So this was the very famous Balachna Bar, which is Gaelic for Pass of the Cattle. 
We'd read about it and watched lots of YouTube videos of it about how difficult it was, how challenging. So we approached it with a little bit of apprehension, knowing full well that the most difficult part were the three hairpins right at the top of the pass. It has a fearsome reputation and with gradients that approach 20% it's the steepest ascent of any road climb in the UK, rising from sea level to 2,054 feet at the highest and it's the third highest road in Scotland. The road was actually built in 1822. The original road was rough gravel and very difficult to clear in winter, meaning it could be blocked for weeks on end. In 1950, it was asphalted. As with all twisty, windy, single track roads, the worst case scenario is meeting traffic coming the opposite way. We had our fingers crossed that when we got to the hairpins, we wouldn't have that problem. As you near the hairpins at the top, the views are stunning and the temptation is to have a look around, but this is when you've really got to keep your concentration and focus on the road ahead. Here come the hairpins.
As ever, the GoPro doesn't do this road justice. The hairpins are tighter than it looks and the road steeper than it looks. I was actually really apprehensive before I did Balak Nabar. I'd seen a lot of mixed reviews and videos and people talking about how difficult it could be. Um, but when we got up there, the roads were great, the weather was fantastic, which really helped, and I thoroughly enjoyed it, every minute of it. The viewing point of Balak Nabar, the highest pass in Scotland, maybe even in Britain. When we reached Apple Cross, we refuelled and then treated ourselves to a well-deserved breakfast. Famous Apple Cross Inn, the other side of Barakibar. On the way to Loch Marie, we've just done Balak Nabar, fantastic. And here we are for a coffee stop. Nanny's coffee shop. Oh, how about that then? Down the A90 to Strathcarran, then through Loch Carran, and up here, and instead of going straight to Shieldig, we did the famous Balak Nabar, Apple Cross Pass to Apple Cross, stop for breakfast there, follow the fantastic Westeros coastal route down to Shieldig, had a coffee break there, and now we rolled past Benig, is it called Benig? I believe it's BNA. And we're in Kinlochu here, and we're going to stop at our final destination somewhere along Loch Marie, the hotel. So that's been today's ride. And what a ride. The thing about the west coast of Scotland is every road is fantastic and if you get the weather that we had, there's no better place on earth. We've just arrived at the Loch Maria Hotel. This is what we need after a hard day in the saddle. A bottle of Caledonian IPA. Cheers. The ride we did today in Scotland is right up there with some of the best motorbiking I've ever done. What do you think? Absolutely. I think it was just the most fantastic biking weather, the most amazing scenery, and it's going to take some beating. Haggis. Haggis. With a wee dram. With a what? A wee dram. With a what? A wee dram. Morning folks, welcome to day four of our North Coast 500 trip. Today we're off to Drumveg.
next stop at Ullapool for some petrol. We were riding the amazing B869 road to Drumbeg when we saw a sign for a beach near Clacton, so we thought we'd check it out. So you get lots of bikers if you're going to do the North Coast 500? You get lots of bikers because it's very popular for the, the bikers doing the whole thing but the two main bits of road they like to drive are the Ach and the Bar which, or the Loop which is right outside the front door. 29 miles and it's single track, bends, turns and very challenging especially on the motorbike. Very challenging especially on the motorbike because you don't have a reverse gear. Morning folks, welcome to day five of our North Coast 500 trip in the little tiny village of Drumbeg and we are heading off from Drumbeg to Betty Hill. So this was the road that Richard the landlord warned us of. He said it was very challenging, even harder than Black and the Bar in places because there were blind summits, blind bends, all single track and definitely not a place you want to meet oncoming traffic. <laughs> We'd set off early enough to hopefully avoid any traffic on the road and actually it turned out to be 10 miles of just fantastic riding.
night we stayed here at the Betty Hill Hotel, which was fantastic. The whole trip has been amazing. So today we are heading to Dornoch. But first of all, we must take in the famous John O'Groats. Apparently, the settlement of John O'Groats takes its name from Jan de Groot, a 15th century Dutchman who used to sail his ferry from here to Orkney and was given the franchise by King James IV in 1496. And of course, you can't come to John O'Groats without the mandatory ritual of the sticker on the signpost. Weather had been fantastic up to now, but as soon as we hit the east coast, it started to change. The time and place, coffee house and restaurant. Highly recommended if you're passing through. This is Helmsdale, and you're in time and place. Hey, yeah, this is Robert, the owner. Here we are, folks. Dunrobin Castle. I think it was the home of the Duke of Sutherland or something. Here we are. End of day six, and we are in Doorknock. Doorknock? Hmm. Yeah, an interesting evening. And to give him his credit, the entertainment was pretty good in very difficult circumstances. So we decided to be supportive and get into the spirit of things, literally. If you've formed a rather sensible image of us up to now, this might just change your mind. But in our defence, we were left entirely unsupervised. Wait a bit turn now. The coach has arrived. <laughs> coach has arrived from England. It's a packed audience <laughs> waiting. <laughs> Get into the toilet. <laughs> Up to the right, first door on the left. Give me I. Give me I. Country road, take me home to the place. Doesn't get much better than this, does it? Come on. You're Morning folks, welcome to day seven of our epic tour. Um, actually, welcome to a rather hungover morning of day seven. Uh, last night uh, went a bit wild, that's one IPA too many. I think got overexcited when the entertainer came on. So today we're off to the Cairngorms. Time for a coffee stop at the dairy at Davios. Second pit stop of the day, Grand Town on Spey. It's just starting to rain, so we thought we might as well have a quick coffee stop. Look at that. <laughs> it's a bit bigger than I thought. <laughs> Thank you. 
Welcome to the Cairngorms, folks. We're about 40 minutes from Ballater, deep in the heart of the Cairngorms. I've just missed a big rain shower that's passed through. It's really peaceful out here. Ballater is a Victorian village with royal connections as it's only eight miles from Balmoral Castle. Just arrived at our destination in Ballater, B&B. It looks pretty, pretty nice actually. It's in a lovely quiet town. And of course, when Prince Charles wrote his famous book, The Old Man of Loughton Gar, he was actually talking about a book he used to hang around this Indian brasserie. Today, we are heading south to Edinburgh. And as the days pass, the story began. And so on day eight, we finally arrived at our last destination of Edinburgh. We think the best time to do the route would be May, where it's less crowded, there's less traffic around and there's certainly less midges. The route is really popular and that popularity is increasing, so it's really important to book any accommodation in advance. 
It's such a beautiful route. You really should slow down and take your time. There's no rush. I know some people can ride it in three days, but we took seven or eight days. So factor in time to have plenty of coffee stops, stops to take photos and videos. And remember, 100 miles on a normal A road is completely different when you're on single track twisty roads in Scotland. On the more technical routes, the single track routes like Balakna Bar, it's really worth going early. It stops you having to stop and let people pass coming from the opposite direction. And if you're going to stay in some of the bigger towns and certainly the cities, make sure you book somewhere with secure parking for the bike. So the question is, folks, is the North Coast 500 Britain's best motorcycle ride? Let us know what you think in the comments below.